Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. yee Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Halloween Edition. How we doing? You got your boy, uh, I go by Butch. Uh, my middle name is Jason Shellcross of the Fantasy Football Sackos. Alex Krogh, it is great having Mark Davis on the podcast with us. He uh, he owns an NFL franchise and he cuts his own hair, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my God. If you are listening to this podcast, you need to stop what you're doing. You need to go to YouTube and you need to just see how ridiculous we look. I am, uh, well, Alex, I'm just going to describe you because holy crap. I've, what, what do I look? I mean, go ahead. The beard is gone. So it's kind of penisy. It's true. And then okay. you look like you started giving yourself a bowl cut and then just stop. That's true. And then the, well, the, fu- one of the funny, <laughs> funnier parts is your hair kind of pokes out the back a little bit. So can we, is it still, yeah. oh, it's full length still. Were you going yeah. for Mark Davis? Like, no, well, no. So like originally I was going to try to give myself, I was going to try to be like seventh grade Alex, um, <laughs> like as I'm looking, looking for a picture on my phone and my phone doesn't even recognize my face anymore. Um, so I was, uh, <laughs> it's really unfortunate. Um, so I, I was going for seventh grade Alex, which, which looked like this. Um, oh, that's on YouTube, with, ladies with and gents. S- with just a sweet bowl cut. Um, and I, I had the red shirt all ready to go. And then I realized that if I actually did this, that I don't know if it would be fixable. Um, and so <laughs> <laughs> you just I, buzzed the bowl I, off. I kind of, yeah. I, so, oh my, I mean, uh, I'm, this is going to be hideous. I can't even believe I'm going to share this. So I, um, after I showered and I, and I combed my hair out, it looked like this. Oh my God. You look like you're going to start an emo band. I know. So I thought about just being like an emo person um, and just kind of not having any fantasy thoughts. Um, But yeah, so like I, I just took a pair of like normal scissors and just hacked it off. And this is kind of what it looked like. And so I was like, you know what? Do your work colleagues and, watch uh, this? Because oh my God. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I can go to work tomorrow. Like I, <laughs> I think I have to work from home until I can go get a haircut because get- I will get mercilessly <laughs> mercifully heckled. Um I, I literally like if if you've never seen a picture of Mark Davis, like I look like Mark Davis. There's no All right, hold on. there's like no Let's doubt pause. about it. Smile for the camera. Just find the first Mark Davis photo you can on Google. Make that face. And then I'll do a side by side. All right. So make. Oh, oh, my. (laughs) Oh, it looks like he's grandpa Mark Davis to you. That's glorious. Yes. Oh, it's he owns an so, NFL yeah, franchise here. and he cuts his own hair. I thought hey, I had I, a clever I costume. Gave it a whirl. It's not it's not as it's not as easy as it looks. I thought I had a clever costume as uh Gardner Minshew's trailer park supervisor. But you know. B- butch. Butch. I drink bush lattes and I talk fantasy football. And I'm all out of lattes. So that's basically you in real life. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yay! Yay! Unbelievable. So Halloween edition. Welcome. All right. Buckle up. 
If the hopefully your teams aren't as scary as mine. If are. the double wides are rocking, don't come a knocking. <clears throat> All right, week uh, week eight, hot or not? Uh, we are talking. It's our start sit <laughs> episode of the podcast, and we're gonna look like fools for the duration. So welcome. And uh, yeah, I can't believe that your your hair is permanent and mine's not. I just like did why isn't it straight can i just ask why it's not straight what like the front yeah like why isn't it why is it not it's mostly it's mostly straight okay it's all just, right you can't like get a i'm not gonna get a level out and make sure my hairline's straight i was hoping that you would put a physical so, bowl a, over your head and then use that to do the line well but, yeah but if if it wasn't fixable by a hairstylist like that would just suck. So just get I went bus. for it. It didn't work. And then I audibled and here we are. You know what I want? I would pay money to see if you were bald though. Like absolutely no hair. You would just you oh, would, God. You, you would look like a thumb. Because <laughs> you don't have a, like your eyebrows are not very distinctive because you have red hair, so you just look like a thumb. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get into this. It's been like far too long. Oh Ooh, hot God. quarterbacks week eight are uh i tried i tried to keep it to like streamable <sighs> people that you guys could theoretically go out and pick up for qbs anyway um my hot quarterback for the week i'm gonna start with teddy bridgewater um we've been saying this for three weeks now uh he had good or what four weeks now he had good matchups in three out of four weeks um Atlanta being two of those. So he played at Atlanta just a few weeks ago. Uh, in week five, he put up 27 completions out of 36 attempts for more than 300 yards and two scores. Um, faces him again. Obviously, I would absolutely take 300 plus yards and two passing touchdowns against Atlanta from a streamable quality quarterback. Um, Atlanta is giving up the most yards per pass attempt in the league at, at more than eight or at eight and a half. Teddy Bridgewater is currently quarterback 18 rostered in just over a third of leagues. Um, I think that he'll have another good day because it's Atlanta. So. I agree. All right. Totally, totally agree. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go somebody that I, I don't think I've even mentioned since we were doing preseason rankings. I don't even know if we ranked him in the preseason. Uh, I'm, I'm going Baker Mayfield. Um, I thought he's about Baker. Currently. Yeah, he's currently only rostered in 20% of leagues. Um, Las Vegas Raiders. They're currently 31st in DVOA from a defensive perspective, which means that they are the second worst defense in football. Would you like to guess the first defense, the worst, like number one worst defense DVOA? Is it Dallas or Atlanta? It's not. It's it's actually the Jacksonville Jaguars. Really? Um, yeah. So they're they're on a bye this week. Um, so I'm going to next to the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, so start your Browns. Um, Baker Mayfield readily available. They give up the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks. They give up, or sorry, the third most points to quarterbacks. They give up the second most points to running backs. Uh, so this is the the maybe the last week you can ride Kareem Hunt. Uh, who you should be very high on um, because guess who's coming back in two weeks? The Nick Chubb experience is starting. Uh, he's not going to be back this week, um, but uh, week nine, they have a bye. So theoretically he will be back week 10 to face Houston. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking about trading someone, um, maybe Kareem Hunt uh, could be somebody that you would think about trading just because his competition is coming back. Although, I mean, he's been good, but he was still really good when Chubb was around. So uh, quarterback wise, Baker Mayfield, uh, because the Raiders are giving up a ton of points. Um, as an FYI, Vegas thinks that that's going to be the third highest scoring um, 
game of the week. Wow. Um, they're over under 52 and a half points. Um, so Raiders and Browns, third third or fourth highest game. Um, there's two two games that have higher points. So Baker right, Mayfield, well. even though he lost Odell Beckham, he'll figure it out. I'm going to argue the other side of the ball on that one. My next hot quarterback is Derek Carr going up against Cleveland. Cleveland giving up the second most pass attempts per game at more than 40. They're kind of an average defense that really just gives it up or the way that they're usually attacked is through the air. Um, They are giving up the third most opponent passing yards per game at just under 290. Derek Carr, quarterback 19 currently rostered in about a third of leagues. Um, I think that, you know, he's shown a new rapport of late with Nelson Aguilar. You got Hunter Renfro there. Yep. I think, and obviously Darren Waller, I think that Derek Carr is absolutely, absolutely streamable if you're in a pinch. Yep, I agree. Wonderful. Well, you already argued the other side, so there you go. All right, let's move on. My last hot quarterback for week eight is uh, the handsome one, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, going up against the Seattle Seahawks <laughs> in Seattle this week. Seattle is giving up the most passing yards per game at almost 370. They're giving up the most completions per game at 30. They're giving up the fifth most pass yards per attempt at 7.7. Uh, I think Jimmy's going to have to pass the ball to keep up with Russ Wil- or, uh, Russell Wilson excuse me, and the Seahawks. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, yes, I know that the 49ers defense is good, but you know what? So is DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Um, Jimmy G, all the way down to quarterback 29, rostered in less than 25% of leagues. He's definitely available anywhere. Somebody needs a streamer. Um, I am very salty that Debo Manuel, Debo Samuel, rather, will be missing the game. Um, I thought Debo was going to have a great game against Seattle. Now I think uh, Brandon yep. Ayuk is going to have a very good game in his place. And also look for uh, George Kittle to be excellent. Uh, he's going to be my tight end one this week. What do you think about Jimmy G going up against Seattle? Yeah, it's start your, uh, you know, another guy that, that's four quarterbacks that are pretty much going to be or pr- are probably available. Teddy B is probably the most rostered of those four that we talked about. And so, yeah, it just makes sense. The The over under in that game uh, is actually the highest of the week between wow. the 49ers and Seattle at 53 and a half points. So. You know, from a Vegas perspective, they're expecting lots of scoring. It's not all going to be one sided because the 49ers defense is good. Um, They're currently the eighth best defense based on DVOA. So if Vegas is expecting that number to get up there, then both teams are going to have to score. Um, They always play competitive games. So theoretically, they'll probably both be in the mid to upper 20s, um, which will get you to that 56 point or sorry, 53 point total. Um, so yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy G makes a, a whole ton of sense, especially if you're in a tight one. What sucks is that Samuels is not there. Um, and so you are looking at the Brandon Iokes of the world. You're looking at the Bournes of the world. You're looking at the Kittles of the world. You know, if, if you're in a tough spot, like it's Kendrick Bourne, right? Um, that could be, um, yeah. a, a potential, you know, streamer this week, uh, you know, you mentioned it. Seattle gives up the most amount of fantasy points to wide receivers. Um, and he had five, five and a half points last week and a half PPR. So, um, or two weeks ago, I apologize. So if, uh, you know, Kendrick Bourne is potentially somebody you could play just based on matchup and, and what you kind of already alluded to. Yeah, with Debo out especially. All right, let's move on to not quarterbacks for week eight. First up, we have Matthew Stafford going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Indy is giving up the fewest fantasy points per game to quarterbacks at 11.7. Stafford currently only has one game over 20 points this season, and that was week four against New Orleans at 22. Um, he has had 18 points and 18 fantasy points and only threw one touchdown against Atlanta last week. Look, if you can't pull off 20 fantasy points against Atlanta, I don't know how you're going to do it against the Colts. 
Uh, he's currently quarterback 23, rostered in 68, almost 69% of leagues. So not not nice. <laughs> Is isn't he almost droppable? Like, yes. He is streamable I, matchup only. I'm surprised that he's... Yeah, and he doesn't have that many of them left. You know, we're, we're halfway through the season, uh, or at least to, to fantasy playoffs. Here's his schedule the rest of the way. Indy, obviously, is rough. At Minnesota is okay. Washington is not a good matchup. At Carolina is okay. Houston's okay. At Chicago, Green Bay. At Tennessee, Tampa Bay. Oof. Like, there's not... There's not that many matchups in there for him to be super successful. Uh, you know, we talked before the season. We thought that he was, you know, a top 10, top 12 quarterback. Yeah. Um, especially where, you know, where he was ripping before he got hurt last year. Uh, and I believe he was quarterback two before he got hurt. And he has not showed that at all. Um, the, they are getting Swift more involved in the running game, or at least he seems say, to be establishing himself it. more and more. Yeah, like they're 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 just not you know just getting behind and letting Stafford ball out. They're being more conservative, and it seems like they're 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 just running their their offense differently. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I think you can drop Matt Stafford. Like there's there should be better options, um, and there's no reason why you know fantasy football is just about as. Like it's about finding the right players, but it's also about getting rid of the right players too. Yes. And Matt Stafford is, is somebody that you should be thinking about cutting bait with. Um, like you mentioned, he's had got one 300 yard passing game. It happened to be last week against Atlanta, which is one of the worst defenses in football. So yeah, I mean, I I think you got to consider it, especially this week going up against Indianapolis. Um, they have the fifth best defense in DVOA. Um, and for whatever reason, the over under in that game is 50, which seems really high. Um, so, so if you're, if you're a sports better, um, I would think about playing the under in that one, um, just because, uh, Philip Rivers doesn't like finishing drives and they like kicking field goals with my guy, Rodrigo Blankenship. Um, and I, I don't think the lions are going to be scoring a ton of touchdowns on, on Indy, uh, especially coming off of a bye week. I agree. All right, let's move on to our next not quarterback for week eight. That is Drew Brees going up against Chicago. Chicago is currently giving up the second fewest fantasy points per game to quarterback at 12 and a half and the fourth fewest or fourth lowest amount of yards per pass per attempt at 6.2. Brees has had back to back 20 point games against the Chargers and the Panthers. Uh, I really think that he falls back to earth this week and against the Bears, I'd say he's probably lucky to hit like 15 points, let alone his weekly average of 18.8 fantasy points. He's currently quarterback 20 rostered in 76% of leagues. Look, we don't know if Michael Thomas is playing. If he is, I don't like him either. Uh, He's one of my not receivers that we'll get to later. Um, Chicago is just a very difficult defense to go up against. They're looking a little short-handed right now. I am fading Drew Brees against the Bears. I mean, the Bears haven't really gotten blown up by anybody yet. Nope, they haven't. <laughs> and, you know, Vegas is expecting very little points. Um, the over-under in that game is only 43, uh, which is one of the lower ones of the week. Um, if you're looking for a streamable option, I, I, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, but the, the Saints defense is very streamable this week. Um, The Bears have not gone over 300 total yards in a Nick Foles start yet, um, which is not good. So if you're if you are in a league that, you know, includes yards from a defensive standpoint, um, any team that's facing the Bears is is a very streamable play. Um, So, yeah, I think Drew Brees is going to struggle a little bit, although like the Bears, for whatever reason, seem to get lit up a little bit by the tight end. So I do think that um you could go that route like breeze is going to check down the entire game especially if michael thomas isn't playing right. uh, so yeah i just uh they're going to they're going to be able to pressure drew breeze you haven't you don't see drew breeze with pressure in his face all that often so probably a low scoring game it's going to be ugly and for whatever reason the bears will probably win because they win the games they're not supposed to there you go 
And then my last not quarterback of the week is good old Danny Jones going up against Tampa Bay. I doubt very many people were starting him anyway, so I don't even know if that's really much of a hot take. Um, Maybe it's sort of a safe fade there, but he is currently quarterback 26. He is rostered in more than 20% of leagues. He's only gone over 20 points in a game once so far this season. Tampa Bay giving up the third fewest fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. Yes, you have Sterling Shepard returning, but he's currently quarterback 26. And I'm just, yeah, I I don't think Danny Jones is going to be very special against Tampa Bay. Nope. Tampa Bay is currently the number one DVOA defense uh, in the league. Um, I, I do have a random question for you. If if you just start a quarterback this week, would you start like, let's just say you had them both on the same team. Would you be starting Ben Roethlisberger or would you be starting Lamar Jackson? Oh, that's fun. If you get them both on the same team. Uh, well, yeah, the Pittsburgh- just theoretically. I mean, the, the Steelers are so good against the run. Yeah, the the Steelers are the number one rushing defense or or running defense running back or I guess what the number one defense against the running backs um and give up the fewest fantasy points per game to running backs even though Lamar isn't one that's sort of what their ground game funnels through uh and yep. it's it's in Baltimore honestly I feel like the Steelers are the better team I feel like Ben's going to have to throw. I mean, I'm not I'm not really thrilled about, you know, Humphrey, Peters and company and for Ben, but I feel like he's more likely to get it done than Lamar is. I I don't I I question the Ravens ability to be able to run the ball this week and um so I I feel like the the Steelers are going to have a better a better chance of moving the ball and sustaining drives than the Ravens will. Because if you stop the Ravens on the run, then you make Lamar throw. He's shown that he can only, can do nothing but miss wide open receivers uh, in Marquise Brown okay. all season. So I trust Ben to make a throw more than so, I do for Lamar. <clears throat> yeah. We're, we're, and we're going to touch on this next week during our potential year on trade targets uh, that we're planning on doing. Um, I, I think you should try to trade for Lamar Jackson. The, you know, this week he's got Pittsburgh. Next week he's got Indy. Those are those are obviously two really rough matchups. Um, but then he's at New England, which has not been very good no. defensively. They're but they're one of the worst defenses DVOA wise, and they've been giving it up lately. Um, and then it's Tennessee at Pittsburgh, and then this is how they finish week thirteen: Dallas at Cleveland, Jacksonville, Giants. So. Like it's possible that Lamar is just raging at the end so, and he hasn't yeah. done it yet. So so if if you can find somebody in your league who's down on Lamar, I, I think you should be down on Lamar, especially the next two weeks. But I, I do think that he's somebody that maybe you could try to swipe if somebody's just really frustrated. I am the only reason I am holding on to JK Dobbins is because the ceiling is through the roof if he is the only back or a featured back in some way there, but also because that playoff schedule is absolutely bananas. Like I have a lot of shares of Ravens on a lot of different teams that haven't really been panning out thus far. I'm just hoping I make playoffs and that they get featured and that it comes together for Lamar because it really hasn't so far this season. Yep. Yeah, and and, right. and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not all that high on either Lamar or Big Ben this week. Um, the Steelers and Ravens are both uh, two of the best. They're both in the top four of DVOA. So, you know, I, I think that's going to be a low scoring game. Uh, I will also mention for the betters, it's the overrunners 46 and a half. Here's the last four games that they've played against each other. Uh, two years ago, there's 40 points scored. Ravens 26, Steelers 14. Uh, November 2018, Steelers 23, Ravens 16. That's 39 total points. October last year, Ravens 26, Steelers 23. That's 49 points. And last December, when uh, Duck Hodges was playing, and I think he was playing in the first game too, uh, Ravens 28, Steelers 10. 
So only one of those games was over 40 points. Um, so I, I do think it's going to be a, a really physical defensive battle. The over under is 46 and a half. Um, and that has happened once over the last four games. So just something to think about, um, especially when you're looking at playing anybody in that game. I, I, I'm down on everybody that's playing quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. I think it's just going to be a grinded out um, kind of bloodbath. And I, I would be very surprised if it, if it ends up being high scoring. Maybe, I guess, uh, as far as the over-under goes, I would just say that I don't think Ben played in half of those games, so I don't really know how much weight I would put into that, right? Um, but yeah, I'll just leave it Yeah, no, that. right, and and maybe he throws three picks again, um, and the Ravens yeah. have short fields, and, you know, yeah, there you go. it's possible. Marlon Humphrey, man, those guys can do it. All right, uh, let's yep. move on to running backs, please. Running backs, hot running backs, week eight. First up, I have Dalvin Cook going up against Green Bay in Green Bay. Re- He's back. Rejoice. Dalvin Cook is back. Um, he is still running back five after missing a week due to injury and sitting through a bye. So that's how good Dalvin Cook is at fantasy football and regular football. There you go, for that matter. Green Bay also is giving up the most fantasy points per game to running backs and the ninth most yards per rush attempt at 4.7. I really think that uh, this is going to be a Dalvin Cook welcome back game. I see him absolutely running wild over Green Bay. Um, I think he's going to look great and healthy. So there you go. And you should still be keeping Alexander Madison on your roster because it's only a matter of time until Dalvin Cook gets hurt again. Oh, um, Lord. I, I want to highlight um, the uh, the revenge game of all revenge games. Um, I think I I think I have him ranked way too high, but I don't care. Um, I have Le'Veon Bell as the number two running back uh, this week because he's facing his old team. He averaged six and a half yards a carry last week in his first week in a new offense. The Did Chiefs are favored by 20 points over too? the Jets. I do. I Alex. do. Alex. I don't even I don't even care. I don't care. <laughs> They're going to he's going to score <laughs> at is, least twice. That is so bad. He, he's going to score twice. Is there a prop on you that? You should deploy him with. Put that. I don't know, but I would can we take make a it. Side bet. You have to go to work like a thumb. No, absolutely not. You have to go to work with no. this haircut. He's going. <laughs> he is going to score two touchdowns this weekend against oh. the Jets defense, which just gets blistered by the run. And so Le'Veon Bell, I, I know you can make the case that it's going to be Clyde, uh, but because it's a revenge game, I just think it's going to be Le'Veon Bell. Look, he is That's on all I'm going my, off of he's straight on, up pure revenge. He is on my hot list for this week. Do I have him as hot as you? No. Does anybody in this world? No. But like, you know, Andy Reid is going to get him into the end zone against Adam Gase and his former team. Um, the At Jets, least twice. The Jets allow more than 125 rushing yards a game. I'm they confident, do. confident that. Kansas City is going to be able to run the ball against them, and Lev Bell, I think, is going to be assuming the goal line duties. So I guess I wouldn't be surprised if he scored, but to rank him at number two requires some cojones that I do not possess. <clears throat> I mean, I have to have some. I look like a penis in your words, so <laughs> I have to have some nuts with a little, with a little that like a cold one that so you put a little cap on it. <laughs> your your hair dude just a little lid all right never mind oh wonderful i can't believe that your wife let you do that oh my god all right me neither our next hot running back you already said that you think it's going to be a low scoring game you're fading everybody but i think james connor is going to sure. have himself a nice week this week the ravens uh Oof. do give up the sixth fewest fantasy points per game to running backs. However, it's rough. they allow the most yards per rush attempt in the league. The most yards per rush attempt in the league at almost five and a half. 
Um, I really think that Ben will continue to struggle. Uh, well, not he hasn't been great. He's been marginal at best for the last two weeks. I think he's marginal at best yep. through the air against the Ravens this week. I think that they turned the ball to James Conner and have him carry the load. And if the Ravens are giving up the most yards per rush attempt in the league, um, I think that the Steelers have one of the few defenses in the league that will be able to slow down uh, the Ravens throughout. Um, and so, I mean, it's the league's number one rushing defense going up against probably the best running offense or one of the hardest to control rushing offenses in the league, even though they haven't really clicked thus far. Um, James Conner just missed on a receiving touchdown last week. Uh, I really think that he gets in, into the end zone in week eight. So I am hot on James Conner as in don't fade him completely. I think that he will be just fine against the Ravens. I, I mean, I think you have to start him if you have him. If, if you have better options, I'd be surprised, especially with four, with four teams on by. I do have James Conner ranked down at 13 this week. Um, uh, which is a running a back total uh, yeah fringe fringe one I if I could just tell you what my top 12 is right now it's there's a ton of really good running backs on some bet like facing some bad defenses this week Derrick Henry at Cincinnati he's going That's to delicious bludgeon them yeah like he well, he's going just, to absolutely kill them yeah uh, no, uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I, D- Derek Henry's at one. I have Love Bell at two, which is just me guessing, honestly. Todd Gurley at Carolina. Todd Gurley is a top nine fantasy football back this year. Uh, and he had 20 points against Carolina a couple weeks ago. Uh, I don't see why he wouldn't be doing that again. Christian McCaffrey's back against Arizona, hopefully, or at least we think. If he's not, Mike Davis is going to destroy the Falcons again, like he did two, a couple weeks ago. Alvin Kamara against Chicago, he might have 10 catches because Drew Brees is just checking down the entire time. Yep. Aaron Jones, great matchup if he plays. Um, theoretically, it's another week. If he's out, Jamal Williams is going to be more than startable. Josh Jacobs at Cleveland is a great matchup after him getting shut down last week. And their offensive lineman not being in COVID protocols all week is a great matchup. Dalvin Cook is a great matchup. Ronald Jones is facing the new, the New York Giants. That's another mm. delicious matchup. Is it Ronald Jones though? And isn't that Lenny's job? Yeah. No, it's Ronald Jones's job. Uh. But that, that's like the only thing that's keeping him. Two two more. Boston Scott, another great matchup against Dallas. We talked about it a couple days ago on our last pod. And then Daryl Henderson at Miami. Daryl Henderson's clearly the back for the Rams. Malcolm Brown base bar- barely gets any any touches and Cam Akers doesn't exist. Um, so that that's my top 12. And if you were to tell me that that's the top 12 before the season starts, I'd be like, Ew, yuck. Uh, I, I don't think Ronnie Jones finishes in there. Um, last week, you saw Leonard Fournette handle 56 percent of the snaps, 40 to 31 for Ronald Jones, uh, only in on 43 percent of snaps. So. They said, see you later, Ronald Jones. Lenny Fournette is healthy. So I, I, I yeah. would be shocked if Ronald Jones uh, finishes that high. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Derrick Henry absolutely is going to eat up the Cincinnati Bengals, especially after they traded away Carlos Dunlap to the Seahawks to try and yeah. plug the, that leaky Seahawks defense a little bit. Um, one of the guys that you did mention is also on my uh, hot list for week eight, and that is Todd Gurley at Carolina. Currently hot. running, hot cur- damn! Currently running eight in total fantasy points, running back eleven in average fantasy points per week. Carolina giving up the third most fantasy uh, fantasy points per game to running backs at almost thirty two per week to the position. Todd Gurley. With more than 20 carries or 20 plus carries in back to back weeks, I think he keeps the train rolling against the Panthers. So I am with you on t- on some yeah. Todd Gurley. Yeah, he he has been 
really crazy. And what did you see the uh, NFL audio clip of Matt Ryan literally in the huddle saying, don't score, go down, don't score. And then the dude scored. What a fantasy stud he is. I know he, he's not good for their team and lost them the game because he scored. But I mean, my God, currently number RB eight. That's fantastic. He was getting drafted as like the, I don't know, 15th, 18th best running back or something like that. He fell way too far in drafts. And I'm oh, very, yeah. very happy to have him. <laughs> All right, let's get into our not running backs for week eight. First up, I have Justin Jackson at Denver. Denver giving up the third fewest fantasy points per game at 17 and a half. The Chargers have a terrible offensive line because of injury replacements. Um, Justin Jackson only averaged 2.4 yards per carry last week against the Jaguars of all people uh, rostered in 69% of leagues. <clears throat> Just uh, not seeing it for Justin Jackson and the rest of the Chargers running backs this week. Really, they've more or less struggled all season and their only value has or their only production has come in pass catching. Um. I actually dropped Josh Kelly in the league because I'm so frustrated watching him get 10 carries, 12 carries every week for like 20 yards. And so see you later, Josh Kelly. Um, yeah. I don't think that they're going to do much nice. against Denver. Yeah, there it is. Finally. Um, <laughs> I was waiting. On, I was waiting for you. I, to come. Even... Wow. Um, I, uh, I, I'm going to fade again somebody that I don't want to fade and I shouldn't fade and that's Jonathan Taylor. Um, he should be doing so much better than he is. He's currently RB21. He's the only guy they have. He's facing a defense in the Detroit Lions that's giving up the fifth most points to running backs and he, he's only had one game over 20 carries and he's their only guy and they've had some plus matchups too. He had, he had nine carries week one against Jacksonville. I know Mac went down in that game. Minnesota had 26, the jets, 13 carries. He should have more than that. Chicago. He had 17 carries, um, at Cleveland, 12 carries, 4.8 yards a, a carry against Cincinnati last week, 12 carries, 60 yards. If they gave him the ball, 20 times he would have over 100 yards in all of those games except maybe the bears game he also and they're just not they're just not giving they're just not giving the ball well he also only has one game with more than a 60 percent uh t- snap share so and that was week two with a 67 percent snap share how do you go from that and the promise of what jonathan taylor could be uh with marlon mack going out for the season and you see you get a glimpse of it in week two to week three, a 40% snap share. Week four, 46% snap share. Uh, week five, 55% snap share. And a week six, 59% snap share. Like, super discouraging for Jonathan Taylor managers. Um, just way too much Jordan Wilkins at, at, to, at the beginning of the season. And now Naheem Hines is obviously still there taking about a third of snaps away it's just you want to see more of him and you're not getting it yeah and and here's the thing i still think he's a good trade target to go out and get if somebody's frustrated with looking at him he's still putting up 13 points a week he's averaging uh currently 13.2 points a game which is obviously very serviceable his matchups coming up are fantastic at Detroit this week, they're giving up the fifth most points to running backs. Baltimore, obviously tough matchup. At Tennessee's good. Green Bay's mediocre. Home against Tennessee's good. At Houston, at Raiders, at Houston again, who's giving up the most rushing yards to running backs. And game. even that Green Bay one um, is good. Green Bay's giving up the most fantasy points per game to running backs. So, like, that's not, none of those matchups are bad. Yeah, so don't like don't be surprised if Jonathan Taylor comes on a little bit 
now that they've had a bye week and maybe they're realizing why are we letting Philip Rivers throw the ball 45 times instead of turning around and giving the ball to Jonathan Taylor 20 times. Um, he hasn't even had the fumbling problems that we thought that he could have or or might yeah. plague him in the NFL. That hasn't been the case yet. Um, so like I'm fading Jonathan Taylor, but only because the carries aren't there. If the carries were there, honestly, I think he could be a top five back the rest of the way or would not be surprised if that ended up happening. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people thought was going to happen after Mac went down. It just hasn't thus far. Um, my next yep. not running back for week eight is good old Zeke going up against the yep. Philadelphia Eagles. Zeke is averaging 6.8 fantasy points per game in the two games without Dak. Dalton attended this morning's meeting, the team meeting, but uh, was not able to progress far enough through uh, the concussion protocol to attend position meetings. McCarthy doesn't expect him to be available uh, for anything until the end of the week at the earliest. It was one of the gnarliest hits I think I've seen in a while. As far as head trauma goes, um, I would be shocked if Dalton managed to play this week. And so you insert good old Ben DiNucci, who is a seventh round draft pick out of James Madison that starts behind a backup offensive line that going into last week only had 13 starts and 11 of them were from this season. Yeah, you might get Looney back, but I don't think that's enough. Um, I really, I just... You put that up, you put that mess up against the Eagles who have a top five defensive line. And I think Danucci's running for his life all day. And uh, I don't think Zeke's going to amount to much. Really, it'd be fun to do. I guess, what are your thoughts on this? And then I want to ask you a couple questions. So what are your thoughts on Zeke this week? I, I f- so this goes back to the beginning of the season for me. I feel like he had the highest floor yeah, he was the safest. Running back. You know, like if, if you were drafting in the top five, he almost seemed like the most guaranteed, like he's always stayed healthy. Um, like obviously Christian McCaffrey's better. Barkley had a higher upside. Um, Kamara's good. Dalvin Cook's fine. Like Derrick Henry. Um, but Zeke seemed like the safest and... Um, all of a sudden you have him, I, I have him in a league and I'm trying to figure out like, do I even want to play him? Um, yeah, he, he has not looked, he, he has not looked like Zeke. He has a ton of drops, um, with pe- catching passes out of the backfield. He got blown up on that pass protection video, uh, that, that went a little viral on Twitter, um, this past weekend. For not trying. And yeah, he, he's. He just doesn't look right. And with offensive line issues and Danucci, Ganucci, Gucci, Sauce being their quarterback, I just don't want like it's hard, it's really hard to play Zeke. Um, it's it's really hard. Rest of season. Zeke or James Connor? James Connor. Rest of season, Zeke or Jonathan Taylor? Oh, I mean, we just went through Jonathan Taylor's schedule. So, I, would you trade Zeke for Jonathan Taylor? As the, I think I would, I, if I, you almost can't trade Zeke <laughs> if you have him on your team because he is at such a low value right now, you won't get really much of anything back for him. And you really almost don't want to trade for him because it's not like Dak is coming back in a couple of weeks. Like Dak is gone for the rest of the year. So you have Andy Dalton who looked trash. And then behind him, you have Danucci who looked equally trash. Their offensive line is trash. Forky. So I just, why would yeah. you want Zeke? So I guess I would probably yeah, last- turn down a trade for him. Unless it was a dynasty trade and I could get him on a steal in dynasty. But like redraft? I am not trading for Zeke. Um, Rest of season. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Zeke? Yeah, at at Philly this week is rough. Pittsburgh's rough the week after, then a bye. So you're already already week 11 before he might give you a good game again. 
And then it's at Minnesota. Washington's a rough matchup. He just got destroyed by them. At Baltimore, who's giving up the fifth, fifth least amount of points to running backs, even though they ha- they're giving up a, you know, whatever you just said, the third most yards per carry or whatever. Um, at Cincinnati is good. And then it's home against San Francisco and home against Philly again. There's not a lot there no. for Zeke where you should probably, you know, I would probably trade him for Jonathan Taylor. It, it makes sense. Zeke or Antonio He's going to be more consistent than Zeke is. Good Lord, man. This is depressing. How Zeke did this or happen? James Robinson. Zeke or David Johnson. Zeke or Chase Edmonds. I would take James Robinson over him. Is Drake going to be out the rest of the season? He's going to be out. But yeah, it's... It's if not you're good. a Zeke owner, you're in rough shape. And if and if you trade him for what you would consider pennies on the dollar, um, he has such a big name that potentially you you're getting the better end of the deal, and the other person's like, like trade trade him before he has another terrible week. And if he goes off again, then you live with the consequences. But the last two weeks have looked very bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to make a rash decision, but either way, I would be very concerned. Um, and then my last yep. not running back of the week is actually David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears going up against the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans giving up the third lowest yards per rush attempt in the league at three and a half and the eighth fewest fantasy points per game to running back. Montgomery running back 20. I think he's a matchup base play, really, is what he amounts to. Uh, given the state of that offense and really the lack of production it's seen all year to manufacture sustained drives and points. And I think that the Saints is not a great matchup. So I am fading Monty and he will be sitting on my bench this week. Yeah, it's somewhat surprised. Like, I understand why he's at RB2 this year at, at RB20. Um, but man, he's been frustrating uh, as an owner where he doesn't score touchdowns and. Like every time he gets the ball, he's getting hit in the backfield. It's just not not enjoyable to watch him uh, as a fantasy owner or even being a fan of the Bears. No. Um, if if I could highlight one more player, um, De- DeAndre Swift, I think might struggle this week against Indy. Uh, we've talked about the how good the Indy defense is. They're giving up the fifth least amount of points um, to the running back position. And DeAndre Swift has been great the last three weeks. Uh, week four against New Orleans, he had a touch a receiving touchdown. Two weeks ago against Jacksonville, he had two rushing touchdowns, 116 yards. Last week, he had a touchdown, which saved him against Atlanta, but he still had four catches. Um, so he he might struggle this week against Indy, but he seems like he's a focal point of their offense. So don't get too good, too discouraged by a potential down week from him. Um, it seems like he's the guy um, there going forward, which is which is good, even though never own a Detroit Lions running back. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some pass catchers that we like and and don't like in week eight. Uh, first up, we have hot pass catchers. I'm going to go with your boy, Tyler Boyd. Uh, Tyler Boyd is yeah. going up. Tyler Boyd is going up the, against the Tennessee Titans this week. The Titans give up the fourth most fantasy points to receivers. They have allowed the fourth most completions per game at 26.2. And they give up the mm. seventh most opponent passing yards per game. He had 13 targets last week. He turned it into mm. 11 catches for more mm. than 100 yards and a score against mm. Cleveland. Man, what a freaking day he had. And I think he continues to have Joe Burrow is the re- real deal. This is a dream matchup. He is going to exploit Tennessee's defense. And uh, yeah, Tyler Boyd, I would fire up all the Bengals. And honestly, it might be one of the few teams in fantasy football right now, if any, where you can probably fire up all three receivers and get away with it. Yeah, and and Geo, because Mixon's probably not going to play as another receiving uh, back out of the backfield. Um, Tyler Boyd has been everything I was hoping he would be. That's why you take him over AJ Green, right, Jason? There you go. Um, Tyler Boyd, yeah, that would Oh, we should have made a board bet on that. I would be, God, I would have crushed you. Um, Tyler Boyd, wide receiver 12 so far. He hasn't even like been that great. He only no. has two receiving touchdowns. 
Um, so maybe that'll go up at some point, which would be great. Um, I mean, he's he's doing it and doing it well. Uh, 13 points on average um, with only those two touchdowns. So yeah, I have him ranked as wide receiver three this week overall behind A.J. Brown and Devontae Adams. Like it. All right, let's move on to our next hot receiver. That is Devontae Adams of the Green Bay Packers going up against the Minnesota Vikings. He is my number one receiver this week. He's had 26 targets over the last two weeks since returning. Last week, 16 targets, 13 catches, almost 200 yards, two scores against Houston. This week, Minnesota, fourth most, giving up the fourth most passing yards per game and the third most yards per pass attempt. Aaron Rodgers is going to have himself a good old time against the Vikings. Devontae is a league winner, week winner, our number one, well, potential number one receiver going into the year uh, just because of the volume that he's had. If the guy can stay healthy, I think he's probably my weekly number one receiver, number one receiver rest of season. I don't think his schedule really matters. Uh, I think the volume is incredible. Mm -hmm. The quarterback is incredible. And I think Devontae is going to absolutely destroy the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, last three games for Devontae Adams against Minnesota. Um, last oh. year, nine targets, oh. seven catches, 106 yards. Uh, second game in 2019, 16 targets, 13 catches, 116 yards. Uh, <laughs> and week one against the Viking, or I think it was week one, yeah, against the Vikings. 17 targets, 14 catches, 156 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, he should have a pretty good day. Well, uh, all right. Now that we've upset our probably our third largest audience, uh, given the fact that we are probably like of our of all the states that we're downloaded in, I think Minnesota is like top three or top five. So sorry, all you Minnesotans. Uh, don't mean to offend. Green Bay is just really good. Hey, at I went to the Winona State University, so I can I can give the Vikings a little bit of gruff. I will also say, uh, just to piss Vikings fans off a little bit further, Sage Rosenfeld should have, should have been the starter instead of Brett Favre uh, in 2009. He would have won the Super Bowl for you instead of throwing across his body when they could have tried a 53-yard field goal to go to the Super Bowl, and they didn't. So, sorry. Wow. <laughs> Mark Davis bringing the heat. <laughs> oh, that's I put so much. I, I had to shower just because I wanted to put so much conditioner in this to make it as shiny as I possibly could for this. It's insane. It's unbelievable. It's almost as shiny as my fake hair is. Oh, my God. It's like all natural. Yeah, there you go, baby. All right. And then my next hot pass catcher is Brendan Ayuk of the 49ers. We talked about it earlier. Talked about how much I love Jimmy G as a streamer this week. Seattle giving up the fifth most yards per pass attempt, the most fantasy points per game to receivers. They're giving up 60 plus fantasy points per game to the receiver position. The Browns are in second place. The Browns are in second place as far as giving up the second most points to receivers and they're only giving up 49 49 11 points less is separating how just earth shatteringly bad these seattle seahawks are at playing defense um last week uh Ayuk had seven targets he turned it into six catches for 115 yards against new england obviously debo went out with an injury uh in the second half I think Ayuk's going to put up like no Debo top 20 is safe. And if I want to talk dangerous about what I think Ayuk's going to do, I would say top 15 this week for Brandon. Are you Ayuk. feeling dangerous? Are I do have him ranked at 15. Lucky punk. You have him ranked yeah. at 15. I do. That's, it's that a great matchup. There's, there's... Debo, I'm mad. No, it God. should be. He's been a dang. Yeah. I'm gonna I, go have to have a Zima. I after really want to <laughs> Zima. I really want to know who who the athletic trainer is for the 49ers and what he oh, does Lord. because every sing, like every offensive player gets hurt. It's he probably came over from the Chargers. 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> just <laughs> Isn't it crazy to think wow. about the fact? Isn't it crazy to think about? Like I think about this I can too often t- than I'd like to admit. More often than I'd like to admit. If some bum medical staffer didn't deflate Tyrod's lung in week two, <laughs> then we would still have Tyrod Taylor as a starting quarterback in the league. Keenan Allen would be useless. Like there would be no Justin yeah. Herbert Bonanza. Like it would just be completely different. But one guy yeah. took it upon himself to do what was best for that franchise. And oh so my thank you. God. <laughs> oh my god uh, my last receiver like of the week isn't a receiver <laughs> pass catcher Richard Rogers going up against the Dallas Ooh. Cowboys Dallas giving up the 10th most fantasy points per game to tight ends I think it's going to be a bloodbath for a litany of reasons we've already covered I think Richard Rogers is a great plug and play while you wait for Dallas Goddard to come back in uh, after the bye. So there you go. Richard Rogers. Yep. And have a great. Yeah, game. I agree with you. One one other person to highlight that is also a tight end is is the, the everlasting Jimmy Graham. Um, he's kind of slowed down the last couple of weeks. He's had five catches each of the last two weeks. He just hasn't scored a touchdown. Uh, he's facing his former team in the Saints, uh, who's giving up the second most points to tight ends. Um, so if you have him. You're probably playing them this week um, in a plus matchup, even though I do like if the Bears score, it's a score a touchdown. It's either Jimmy Graham or it's Allen Robinson. There's like nobody else there. And Allen Pretty Robinson's much. concussed. So, yeah, who knows if he plays? All right, let's move on to not pass catchers in week eight. First up, I have Michael Thomas. Uh, I'm assuming he's playing finally, hopefully. Uh, If not, then it's whoever plays receiver for the New Orleans Saints this weekend. Uh, Chicago giving up the third tied for third fewest yards per pass attempt at just over six. They're also giving up the fourth fewest fantasy points per game to receivers. Uh, We've talked about all season how good that Chicago Bears defense is. They haven't really suffered any injuries, knock on wood, and are still doing excellent. Uh, They embarrassed Tom Brady, who turned around and, you know, continued to blow out what they do? They blew out the Packers the week after that. So I'm excited for Bears Packers this year. It's going to be fun to watch. But um, I am expecting more of the same against Drew Brees and Michael Thomas. So that's my not receiver. Yeah, somebody I'm fading this week is just because it's the law of averages is a uh, stop, drop, and Tyler Lockett. Um, he, um, I mean, yeah, he just had 45 points um, in a half PPR league. Uh, he had 52 in PPR leagues. Just stupid. Um, he had 20 targets last week. That It's just not going to happen again. The law of averages says he comes crashing back to earth uh, in a somewhat rough matchup against the San Francisco 49ers, whose defense has been really good, except for just this one random week against Miami. Um, which I still don't think I'll ever understand. Um, New England receivers had seven catches for 95 yards last week. The Rams receivers had 10 catches for 93 yards uh, the week before that. Yeah, they had two touchdowns in that game. Um, but the 49ers defense has been stingy uh, on two wide receivers. And what goes up must come down. So I'm fading Tyler Lockett this week just because, I mean... It's just common sense, in my opinion. I like it. I have a couple more. The next I am fading is Kenny Galladay going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Indy tied for third fewest yards per pass attempt at 6.2 with the Bears, uh, giving up the 14th fewest fantasy points per game to receivers. I'm just the, the Detroit Lions are choosing to run the ball more than pass this year. It's affecting the output from Kenny G and uh, Matthew Stafford, and I'm fading them against a good defense. So, yeah, that's fair. I one uh, one pass catcher that I I failed to mention that I do like 
is Mike Evans. Um, Chris Godwin's out this week, um, and and we talked in previous episodes about the fact that when Godwin plays, Mike Evans isn't good, and when he doesn't play, Mike Evans is good. And he's had a couple of weeks to figure out how to get his ankle um, hopefully better. He's facing an, an easy Giants defense. Um, so he was some he's somebody that I think is gonna have a good week. Sorry. I, I know that's going against like what it. we're doing, but just wanted to highlight him. He's he's kind of somebody that's oddly flown under the radar, even in a very good offense. Um, and you've seen the emergence of Gronk. Um, and when Antonio Brown gets there, good lord, is that offense gonna be just nasty. Yeah, well, see you later, Mike Evans value, whether or not Godwin plays or doesn't play, you know, like how mad would Evans yeah. you know, managers be. All right, yep. uh, moving on. I have next. I am fading Devonte Parker. I feel like this is sort of a gimme. Uh, you have the Rams mm-hmm. uh, coming into town, who are giving up the fewest yards per pass attempt at less than six, and the second fewest fantasy points per game to receivers. Couple with that with a brand spanking new rookie quarterback, and I am sitting Devonte Parker everywhere this weekend, so I can get a one week evaluation of Tua Tagovailoa and how he throws the ball. Um, yeah, especially against the Rams. Uh, my next uh, wide receiver or pass catcher that I'm fading is Chase Claypool because he sucks. That's it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. He's going to do it, nothing again this week. Is this going to be every week? He's going to do nothing again. Yep. Every week. Okay. Until everybody drops him. Okay. I know you can't drop him, but you can't play him. Okay. Great. Okay. I I am just so speechless and filled with rage over your hate for rookie receivers. How's that Justin Jefferson call working out for you that Justin Jefferson's gonna be a one week yeah. fling drop? Yeah, I was that, wrong. That, I was oh, wrong. Okay. All right. As long yeah. as we're clear. Uh, my last yep. drop, or my not drop, my last fade of the week is Tyler Higby going up against the Miami Dolphins. Miami giving up the second fewest fantasy points per game to the tight end. Um, they just that offense has not looked right this year at all. No, what they haven't had a no, receiver hasn't. over a hundred yards in since like week one or something crazy. But yeah, that offense is just not. It's not it. Yeah, and he was so, oddly just randomly out with a finger injury or hand injury that everybody thought was going to play, and so people that went and picked up uh, Everett to, to as a spot start actually did better than what Higby's been averaging uh, this year. Um, yeah, Tyler Higby's been a, a bit of a disappointment. We we talked before the season he could be the ultimate boomer bus guy, and he's just been a mediocre guy. Yeah. So that's all I have for. Hot or not, week eight. So thank you guys for listening. We are going to transfer to our social media page. So I'll tell you that. Y- you can stop looking at Mark Davis in a bowling shirt. I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at this line. It's unbelievable. I might keep this. You look like you look like you have a helmet on. <laughs> Be safe. Have fun. Eat candy. Don't give your kids Alex's haircut. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. Social media page. Thank you guys. If you found any of this uh, embarrassing for us or entertaining, please like and subscribe. (laughs) Uh, Hit that bell so you get all the notifications when we post that hot, hot new goodness for you. And yeah, have a happy Halloween. Yay, yay. That sweet, sweet Sacco sauce. Feel like we brought it tonight. It was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sacco's podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sacco's.